In these Masters of the Air series clips, we see air-to-air -air engagement between B-17 bomber gunners and the German Air Force bomber interceptors. The intent of this video is to review the combat effectiveness of bomber gunners versus German bomber interceptors. This declassified page from an August 1942 War Department Army Air Forces document titled Requirements for Air Ascendancy outlines the anticipated effect German air defenses will have on heavy bombers attacking the Reich. During the German bombing campaign over Great Britain, German losses were reaching an unsustainable rate. Germany lost 185 airplanes in one day. Due to these losses, Germany abandoned their daylight Battle of Britain campaign. Great Britain's fighter defenses were only days away from collapse, had they continued. The U.S. bombing campaign against the Reich will be different. U.S. bombers have more defensive firepower and armor than German bombers. This page shows the location of the 12 machine guns on the B-17F model and features of the bomber in a cutaway image. This chart shows the armor plate and transparency locations on the B-17 from a 1944 B-17 pilot training manual. The waist gunner's armor panels are shaded here. B-17s and B-24s can absorb more battle damage than German bombers. The U.S. bomber attrition rate will be lower than German bombers battling the RAF. It is predicted that U.S. bombers can attack over the Reich without excessive losses. This map from a 1945 document titled Atlas of World Battlefronts and Semi-Monthly Phases outlines the Reich-occupied territories as of July 1943. Bomber losses will drop even further as German fighters are depleted. It is assumed the bomber-gunner kill ratio will be 2 to 1 against German enemy aircraft. For every U.S. bomber lost in air-to-air -air engagements, the Germans will lose two fighters to bomber-gunners. It is estimated one German fighter is combat equivalent to one and a quarter U.S. fighter. So to destroy all existing 657 German fighters on the Western Front, the U.S. is expected to lose 325 bombers in this exchange. German bomber interceptors adopted and modified various armaments and tactics to attack the U.S. bombers. There was a general trend to upsize their aircraft armaments in caliber and number, thus increasing the guns or cannons' destructive effect per pass. The fighter's main anti-bomber armament was the MG-151 20mm caliber autocannon. This image from a 1944 Air Ministry document titled Vulnerability and Armament of German Aircraft outlines these attributes of the ME-109G model frontline German fighter. The plane is armed with two 7.9 or 13mm machine guns and three MG-151 20mm autocannons. It took around 25 20mm autocannon hits to destroy a heavy bomber. This image shows the MG-151 installed on a BF-109 in wing pods. The FW-190s were also armed with up to six 20mm autocannons. This chart from a declassified 1945 Army Air Forces Evaluation Board document titled 8th Air Force Tactical Development, August 1942 to May 1945, outlines the effect German armament upgrades had on bombers as the war progressed. The x-axis is a monthly period and year. The columns in the body of the chart reflect the number of cannon hits per machine gun hits on returning bombers. This value increased as the war progressed from 40 cannon hits per 100 machine gun hits in the second half of 1942 to 135 in the period May-June 1944. This ratio increased by a factor of three in just two years. The line in the body of the chart is the number of bombers lost due to enemy aircraft. The value increased dramatically during the period shown. The bomber losses were attributed to increased German aircraft armament, increased enemy aircraft attacking, and increased number of bombers attacking the target. A good graphical illustration of the U.S. and Axis fighter armament upgrades as the war progressed is shown on this chart from a 1947 United States Strategic Bombing Survey document titled Japanese Air Weapons and Tactics. The Frank fighter was initially armed with two 12.7 mm machine guns and two 20 mm cannons, then four 20 mm cannons, and then two 20 mm and two 30 mm cannons. The U.S. fighters listed ended the war with either six or eight 50 caliber machine guns. The U.S. did not fully embrace widespread use of the auto cannons in their fighters or bombers. German bomber interceptor tactics evolved throughout the war, exploiting the bomber 
bomber formations, or escort coverage vulnerabilities. Breaking up the formations and picking off stragglers was a very successful tactic. 50% of bombers destroyed by enemy aircraft were stragglers on some missions. This is why maintaining your place in the bomber formation is critical, taking advantage of the mutual protection the combat boxes firepower provides. German interceptors also took advantage of the bomber's inherent weakness in defending against forward-facing attacks. As discussed in this August 1944 Headquarters 20th Air Force document titled Combat Losses and Damage of the 8th Air Forces. A German fighter had a 2 to 1 advantage when attacking B-17s from the 12 o'clock low direction and a 1.5 to 1 advantage when attacking from the 12 o'clock high direction. This implies a German bomber interceptor will have a 2 to 1 kill ratio over the bomber when attacking from the 12 o'clock low direction. This advantage will drop to 1.25 to 1 when the Bendix chin turret was added, like in this view. This is why there are numerous frontal attacks during the Masters of the Air episodes. Even with chin turrets, the ratio is still not combat parity and will remain a bomber weakness throughout the war. Another factor to consider is the level of pilot proficiency measured by training hours, as shown on this chart from a 1945 British Bombing Survey Unit report titled The Strategic Air War Against Germany, 1939-1945. to The German hours of training progressively decreased as the war progressed from around 230 hours at the start of the war to 110 hours at the end of the war, while both RAF and U.S. pilot training hours increased. The dramatic decrease in bomber attrition from enemy aircraft is shown on this chart representing lost heavy bombers of the 8th Air Forces due to German fighters. The data was extracted and plotted from a 1945 document titled Army Air Forces Statistical Digest World War II. The x-axis is a month and year. The y-axis is a percentage of 8th Air Forces heavy bombers lost per credited sortie. Two points to make. Bomber losses per credited sortie dropped to less than 1% after June 1944, the month of D-Day. After June 1944, flak was more of a threat to bombers and fighters. The second point is the 8th's leadership response to the early war high bomber attrition due to fighters peaking at 10% in December of 1942. This February 1943 trip report evaluation memo outlines the leadership response to the large loss rates. Seven bombers were lost out of 70 dispatched for a loss rate of 10%. General Aker will continue to send out bombers until he has one left, and then he will dispatch that one also. The definition of an aircraft destroyed, probably destroyed, and damaged is defined on this page from a 1945 Statistical Summary of 8th Air Force Operations. An aircraft is considered destroyed when it is seen to crash, seen to disintegrate in the air, or be enveloped by flames, land in friendly territory, and captured. The crew bailed out. 8th Air Force losses per month are shown on this table. This column represents the heavy bombers lost per month by enemy aircraft. This table represents the number of enemy aircraft shot down by 8th Air Force bomber gunners per month, as highlighted in these rows. A total of 6,259 enemy aircraft were claimed shot down by bomber gunners. This table rolls up the type of enemy aircraft shot down. FW-190s and ME-109s represent 81% of the aircraft shot down by bomber gunners. Bomber gunners also claim to have shot down 57 ME-262s in aerial combat. Calculation of the bomber's kill ratio can be problematic due to duplicate kill claims made by bomber gunners. Bomber gunners' credited kills are known to be overestimated. All belligerents, even the Germans, overclaim kills, as discussed on this page from an Army Air Forces document titled A History of the 8th USAAF Fighter Command. During the Battle of Britain, the entire RAF was wiped out due to German pilot claim kills. Claim kills exceed the entire RAF inventory by 1,400 aircraft. Goering had no explanation for this discrepancy to Hitler. Even with a 20% reduction in claim kills, the values did not align with reality. German intelligence was blamed for underrepresenting RAF inventory. The overclaiming of U.S. bomber gunners was discussed in RAF circles. 
RAF bomber gunner shot down German interceptors at night, but nowhere close to the 8th Air Force's bomber gunner claims. The B-17 bomber gunner claims were so large that the RAF half-jokingly suggested U.S. bombers should be sent out without bombs to engage German Air Force in air-to-air -air combat and should be able to wipe them out in about a half a dozen raids. Bomber crews recognized the over-claims, but to increase morale, the higher-ups allowed them to be recorded. It is also of interesting to note that the Germans considered their aircraft lost only if the pilot was killed. This will have a large effect on the discrepancy between German and U.S. records. This graph outlines German aircraft shot down by bomber gunners and fighters. The x-axis is a month and year, and the y-axis is an area plot representing the number of enemy aircraft shot down. The 8th Air Forces, addressing the known over-bomber gunner claims, reevaluated the claims and provided an updated dotted line which tried to remove the duplicate claims. The reevaluated claims are weighted average around 45% of the published levels between December 1942 and May of 1944. We can now tabulate these values by reducing the bomber gunner claims by around 55% between these dates. The overclaim corrected bomber gunner kill ratio is plotted on this chart. The overall bomber gunner wartime average kill ratio is 1.29 to 1 or 1.3 German interceptors are lost for every bomber lost, taking into account bomber gunner overclaims. As a caution note, the channel study calculations only looked at official U.S. Army Air Force's overclaim reevaluations. These may or may not reflect a more exhaustive German fighter loss investigation. In summary, it was anticipated that for every bomber lost due to enemy aircraft, two fighters would be lost. In reality, the ratio was closer to 1.3 to 1. This is due to overestimation of the combat effectiveness of the bombers in their role to defend themselves and or underestimating Germany's ability to counter the bomber threat. Likely a little of both. Duplicate bomber gunner claims were never resolved during the war. Three tidbits of data I found interesting. The U.S. never resolved the head-on attack vulnerability of the B-17. The predicted bomber gunner kill ratio seemed low at an initial 2 to 1. Lastly, General Aker's statement to send the bombers regardless of the attrition levels. If you found this study informative and worthy of your time, please consider engaging with the video by liking, commenting, and or subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.